Hello, this video is going to give you a quick look at um, the House Accounts optional module for Aloha Poz. House Accounts are designed for corporate accounts, so if you're running a restaurant and your customers want to charge to an account and you want to invoice them or send them statements later on, you can do that. First of all, what I'm going to do is show you a quick transaction where we can go through the point of sale and post to a house account. So I'm just going to log in with my user code into the point of sale. Uh, because it's my first transaction of the day, I'm going to use the clock in to clock in, and there's some messages for me. Okay, so this is my floor plan screen. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because this video is more to do with the, uh, the account side, but I'm going to open up table 42. We're going to enter two guests, click on OK. Now we're just going to end up a few items. We'll go straight to our beers. Uh, we're going to have a Crown Lager, uh, Guinness, and then let's go and have a, a pizza. Uh, have a deluxe pizza and we'll, uh, we'll have, or the salad with that. We'll have a rocket salad. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to click on the close button, which takes us to our payment screen. I've got a house account button or a tender key set up. Click on that, um, confirm that the amount's correct, click on OK, and then I can assign it to a house account. Now, I know house account number one I've set up in the system, so I'm going to click on one, click on OK comes up with the uh, details of the customer's name so we can confirm that if that's correct we're going to click on OK um, that brings that house account into the screen we, we can once again modify that or adjust that payment type if everything's all OK we'll click on close and that will complete that transaction so that's how we do uh, a sale charging to a house account through Aloha Polis now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just flick over to um, Aloha Manager Aloha manages our back office software, which is where we do the main administration for Aloha Polls in terms of programming and sales reporting. Um, when I set up my house accounts, I must go into maintenance, payments, house accounts. So I quite simple, I assign an account number, put the customer's name, address details in there. As you can see here, I've only got three house accounts. Um, there's the details here. So that's all the only setup I need to do in Aloha Manager. Okay, now what I'm going to show you now is actually um, uh, a third party add on for Aloha POS which will control all of our accounts. So what I'm going to do, I'll minimize all of those screens and I'm going to open up the Access POS software. Okay, so that's opened up now. Now I'm going to log in with a code number, it could be any code number for security purposes to access the software. Now, so this software will reside on the Aloha back office computer al alongside Aloha Manager. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into debtors um, where we must add all our debtors the same with the same account number as we have in Aloha Manager. So let's go into our debtors lookup. Now I've already added these customers in here. Let's select the first one. Account code number one, Jeff Smith. There's the address. That's the same detail that's in Aloha Manager. So we must match Aloha Manager to our uh, you know, customer account software. Okay, so we can go through when we've done all that. I've actually got three customers all set up in here. Okay, gives you a running balance. Okay, so once again, let's go into one of them, show you other detail we can do. We can set up all their contact email addresses or phone, mobile numbers, etc. Even set up a credit limit. Okay, so what I'm going to do show you now is that we need to import the Aloha transactions. So I'm going to go into here, import Aloha transactions. Now we can see here we've already imported previous transactions. There's our um, account names, account numbers, there's our Aloha check numbers, the date, transaction dates. This little tick here says it's already been processed into our software, okay? But we can keep that on the grid so it gives me a bit of an audit trail to see what days I've imported. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to click on the Browse button. Now my last uh, trading day was the 6th of December 2016, so under the Aloha directory. I'm just going to select that dated folder and click on OK. Once I've done that, I'm going to click on Import. OK, so that's now imported all those house account transactions from that day. I'll also mention here that um, once I've imported it, 
our software will stop you re-importing previously imported transactions. Um, so what I've, I've brought that in now, we can see here Jeff Smith, we've got check number one dub triple zero one. We've got a sale thirty six fifty. There's another transaction here because there can be multiple transactions for the one customer for the one same day. And there's our other customer transactions. So all I need to do now is I will simply click on process and that will bring that data into our software. So it's as simple as that. We browse, assign the, um, the dated folder, click on import and click on process. Once I press process, it marks the items uh, as imported. For example, if I attempt to import the same dated folder again, it won't do it. It's saying it's already imported. Okay, so I'm gonna close out of this screen now. Now let's go into our debtors. Let's go. We'll go show you some of these other functions later. But let's go straight to our printing statements because this is the key uh, feature of it. Um, we've got a screen here, a filter screen. I can choose the from and to date. I can select whether I want to print all statements or just statements over 30 days. Or I can um, select and um, put a message on the statement. I can select the printing order of the statement. I can select that I want to bring it up on the screen, in this case I will for this demonstration. I can select do I want to show EFT payment option, which, are, which is basically your bank account details on the statement, which allows your customers to pay you uh, directly from their bank account. Uh, if you happen to take credit card payments, um, you can select that and it'll actually print that, I'll show you shortly, print all that detail on the statement for you. Um, you can um, you know, print on aging on the statement in other words current transactions transactions over 30 days 60 days 90 days etc um, what else can you do you can um, you know select on email statements so if I selected this if the um, the customers have an email address assigned to them it'll automatically email the statement to them okay now what I'm going to do I'm going to click on print yeah now it's going to bring up all the uh, statements from my customers. Okay, and I can toggle those through here. Uh, otherwise, normally that would be printed. Um, now, on the uh, statement, we can see the transactions. We'll see POS invoice and then a check number. Okay, that check number is obviously the Aloha POS check number. Um, the advantage of having that printed on the statement is if the customer queries the transaction we can always go back into Aloha manager and bring up the full receipt the full detailed receipt and and show the customer what what, what that uh, total was all about um, we can see on the uh, statement we've got uh, this will be uh, the, the restaurant or the you know um, the license of the software details the restaurant details there the address etc um, this area here is the customers address details it's designed for a window facing envelope um, so you can fold up the statement, put it in, uh, and post it uh, with a windowed envelope. Um, underneath here, we've got our bank account details for the customer if they wish to EFT payment. Um, we've got a reference number automatically in there, so they can uh, EFT you the money, electronic funds transfer, and with that reference number. We have this is where our message goes if we wanted a message on our statements. We've got credit card details here, which we selected if we want to take credit card as payment. So it gives an area here where the customer can fill that in, sign it all up and uh, send that back to you. So yeah, that prints out all our statements. So I'm going to close all that now. I'll click on no to that and we can close that screen down. But um, just a few other sort of things here. Debtor lookup. This is if I want to select an individual debtor. Uh, so if I select a particular debtor which I wish to send a statement or print a statement for, I'll select that individual and bring that up on the screen like that. Okay. Um, if I hadn't selected any individual customer code, well, we'd obviously be printing all statements. Um, okay, so let's uh, close all that. We, now, there is an option here, do I want to save the date range? Normally I would say yes, if I was been printing the statements for the end of month, I would say yes, save that date range, so the next time I print my statements, it will use the following month. Um, so I'll go yes there. Okay. Now let's quickly go through a few other features of the debtor software here. Um, debtor inquiry. Now, not only are we producing all our statements, all payments will be processed through this software. So debtor inquiry, I can click on there. Let's uh, select a particular customer. Go select. Um, now I can view their transactions. 
so that's an audit trail of all their transactions here okay, I can sort that in various methods reprint out the receipt or print out a summary report um, I can take a payment so this uh, customer owes two hundred ninety three dollars and ten cents if they're making a payment I could say let's, let's put a hundred hundred dollars in there um, select the payment date that's all okay press on enter processing payment for a hundred dollars to account there yes so we'll process that and we'll do that to cash and press enter okay so that's that's process that payment if we go back to our view transactions uh, we'll be able to see that payment just here okay um, that all naturally that'll be on our um, our statement as well we can um, use this function to once again go into our statements and print out an individual statement for that customer I just might as well show you while I'm here uh, so we can um, like that okay we can have customer notes process up extra sales through bookups here okay we can make payments through um, from their last statement balance um, etc so that's what the inquiry screen is I can change a debtor and I can go to a different customer just like that from that button up there click on the close now debtor list basically what that does is just prints out a list of all our customer our account customers um, so I can select the order in which I want to print those out in one sort of good feature that we have we can actually assign different data categories to customers so if you um, yeah, want to categorize you know different customers for uh, for reporting purposes or printing statements etc we can do that um, I can email this report if I wish let's just produce the report up on the screen so I'll just make that a little bit larger so we can see that okay so let's put 200 percent okay it's all this is it's really just a, a list of all our um all our customers um, their name and address details on it the more mostly relevant report is our debtors accounts uh, receivable report um, this is obviously details all our customers telling you how much money they owe you and, and what aging they are whether it's current 30 60 90 days etc so I can once again filter the order of print select a particular debtor of you know, custom, you know, debtor category um, yeah, there's other options here let's just print one out here okay let's just actually knock that down to say 150 so we can see that a bit better obviously normally be printing that out on an A4 printer so it runs through our um, customers telling you what their balance is their current 30 60 90 um, uh, balance are let's close that off here Okay. print statements we've been in there debtors audit report what that one's all about is where I want to filter through all my customers and, and, and report on various types of transactions um, so if I wanted to uh, for example I could select start from this customer uh, end from this customer and show me every transaction where the sale amount was between $10 and $100 so let's just start uh, print that okay and this is an audit trial once again I'm going to drop that down to 100 so we can see that bit better um, yeah so that's a, a, an audit trial of every transaction so I can go through and you know pick out the transaction that I want um, okay now one last sort of features a lot of utilities here oh before I actually get to their global debtor account posting what that's for is mass updating customers so for example if you wanted to charge a, uh, a monthly administration fee for running accounts you could do that you could select say charge all accounts uh, once again this is our data category we can filter down using data categories um, we can start from a certain account a simple sort of form we could enter say two dollars as our monthly uh, we can type in description a monthly account service fee whatever we want to do and then once we do that click on process and what that'll do that'll mass update all accounts with a charge of two dollars um, so that you know be quite handy let's close there let's go back to our debtor utilities um, there's various sort of like deleting a debtor up to updating debtors importing aloha transactions which is the main sort of feature um, sending all email to debtors if you want to send a message to all your debtor customers you can click on this here um, type in the subject attachments type in a message and that'll do an email blast to all your customers um, so that's basically that in a in, in a nutshell um, 
So it replaces the, uh, the Aloha House Accounts native um, setup in Aloha Manager and gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot more options in controlling customer accounts. Thank you.